in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Thank you for our global family all over the world, from America to the United Kingdom to South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, China, Germany. Thank you, O oh God, for the many who are connecting, the many who will hear these truths. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless your people. Let today mark a turnaround in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for your love for me. I am overwhelmed. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not somebody who really, really loves to, uh, you know, just be around the spotlight. I'm quite a conservative person, so you can imagine what this means for me. But I truly, truly want to express my gratitude. I'm told that there have been so many things happening on the internet just to show honor. And I truly appreciate, it's an honor to serve this generation. It's an honor to be a blessing to all of you. My precious family in Zaria and then our global family, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you uh, with all my heart. Now, I began to think very carefully on the things that I'll be sharing and um, it's been my conviction, it's been my persuasion to ensure that people um, get blessed and have an accurate understanding of the ways of the Spirit. And I thought that sharing something along that line would be a blessing to us. Um, so I really want us to pay attention. I want you to lend your destiny this few minutes to receive the Word of God that will come to bless, that will come to lift, in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, by the privilege of His grace, um, you are celebrating me and celebrating what God has done and continues to do in and through my life. But there are principles that have been followed through the years and have been kept that are responsible for the results that we now celebrate. Ultimately, it is the grace of God, but then it's an intertwining of systems and principles and I really would want to share some of them. This would be my birthday gift to our global family and all who are connected to this grace. Uh, I'd like to share what I title the principles of transgenerational impact. I'm concerned about the sustainability of our impact, not just the impact. Bless God for the privilege and the opportunity. Um, but then I really, really would want to... Uh, pour this out as a birthday teaching to just bless our hearts and i pray the lord will bless us in jesus name acts chapter 13 and verse 36 the bible says that and david served his own generation he served the purposes of god some versions will say in his own generation not only did he serve his generation the bible says he served the purposes of god but also in his generation. And it is, it is important to not only serve God, but to serve God in a way and a manner that is relevant to the context of a generation. And there are principles that I have kept in my life, and uh, there are principles that have come from the Word of God. This is my Bible right here. I believe the Word of God with all my heart. This is all that has made me what I am. I have profound reverence and respect for the Word of God. And um, I, I, I want to share with you these principles, and they would bless your heart. 
First, it's important for us to know that God is a God of patterns. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 40, when Moses began to build a tabernacle in the wilderness, again he was told that he builds according to pattern. In this kingdom, we are not given the luxury and the privilege of inventing our pathway to success or inventing our pathway to the knowledge of God. This path has been predefined. Our assignment, like Prophet Jeremiah would say, is to ask for the ancient path. And then when we find it, that we walk therein and find rest for our soul. So God is a God of pattern. When you read in Exodus chapter 40, Exodus chapter 40 uh, from verse 16 and then from verse 33 down to 35, the Bible clearly states that God continued to come to tell Moses, ensure that the tabernacle is built according to pattern. And then the Bible says something interesting. The B part, the Bible says from verse 33, and so Moses finished the work according to pattern. Then the Bible now says, and the glory of God came. The glory of God came and covered the entire tabernacle such that the priests could not even enter. I have said it again and again that the glory of God will always come as a confirmation that his patterns have been honored. Every time divine patterns are honored, the glory of God is the effect. His glory comes to honor the fact that his patterns have been kept. So if the glory of God comes upon a ministry, the glory of God comes upon an individual, the glory of God comes upon um, a family, the glory of God comes upon our finances, our lives, a nation, it is only proof that the patterns of the kingdom have been kept. It is very important for us to understand this. Many people desire the glory of God. We desire the glory of God in our lives, in our businesses, in ministries, our career, and so on and so forth. But the challenge is not the unwillingness of God, as it were, to reveal his glory in our lives. The challenge most times is that we are not walking in keeping with his prescribed patterns. Amen. And so I'll take a few points that I've written down here to be a blessing to us. Number one, the first key that must be um, observed and kept for any life and any destiny that seeks to be able to make impact in this generation especially, and it's been consistent with every generation, is that you must know God. This is very important. The knowledge of the Holy One is critical and very important. I'm sure that several people will be watching from different nations of the world, belonging to different faiths and, and beliefs and all of that. And, and I have profound respect for whatever it is that you believe. But as a child of God, one whose convictions are referenced from Scripture, I can tell you that the Bible can turn any man into a wonder because it helps you to know the God of heaven. Very, very important. John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying now. And then he says, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the Father and then the Son. The knowledge of the Father and the Son is eternal life. The one true God. It is very, very important. Most people fail in life primarily because we do not have convictions. It is terrible to live in this generation without convictions. To dilly-dal between thoughts, dilly-dal between opinions, dilly-dal between perspectives, and so on and so forth. It is very important that we know God. Daniel 11 and 32, the B part says, but the people that do know their God. The Bible says, number one, they shall be strong, and then number two, they shall do exploits. Our exploits in life and our strength, our capacity is predicated upon our knowledge of God. And, and the knowledge of God does not just mean the mere awareness that there is a deity. No, no, not at all. It means a personal knowledge of God that leads to strength and conviction. Very, very important. Jeremiah, 
Jeremiah chapter 9, the prophet was teaching, and when you read from verse 23 and 24, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, he says. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But then he says, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The pride of the believer is not in the acquisition of physical things and material things as important as they can be. Our pride and our confidence in this kingdom is predicated upon the experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is very important. You will never be able to influence a generation when you do not know God. The advantage of the knowledge of God is that it brings what we call spiritual growth. You know, we talk a lot about spiritual growth and most people think spiritual growth means participation in a denomination's activity. That may help spiritual growth, but ultimately, spiritual growth is measured by two indices. Number one, um, your degree of conformity to the character and the image of the Christ. This is the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth. And then number two, your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. A man is said to be growing spiritually to the degree to which you, number one, conform experientially to the character of the Christ. And then number two, your depth of comprehension Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. It is important that we contend through the knowledge of God to strive, taking advantage of the grace supplied us to grow spiritually. Amen. And then also, um, I would want to say this. When you really, really want to know God, you must contend for the grace that helps you to embrace the whole counsel of God. Now, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. What I'm saying is very, very important. Um, I think the reason why many people do not maximize their spiritual experience is because, um, and, and, and we preachers must take a very serious responsibility for this, I have taught again and again that a believer does not mature when we are, we are limited by just a dimension of God. God is multidimensional and the nature of his operation is that he reveals himself dimensionally to people. I have been given a dimension of the grace of God to communicate to my generation and I'm honored to be able to carry that, that fire, that grace. But all that God has given me is not all that he has and it's not all that is needed for a generation. Now, if I limit this generation to only my understanding of God and the perspective communicated to me, then other dimensions of God that are equally required to strengthen the body will not be there. This has been the challenge with ministries again and again. As well-meaning as we may be, we may not have mentored people properly into embracing the whole counsel of God. Sadly, the pandemic has come now and it has revealed several dimensions that we may not have paid attention to. For instance, the place for personal encounter and press for the things of God. There are people, respectfully speaking, who will have to depend on a pastor's teaching or a corporate fast, a corporate program from a church or a meeting to be able to grow spiritually because they have not been mentored into understanding that we must take personal responsibility for our spiritual growth. For, for such people, you can imagine how tragic it will be for them now that um, the, for, for most parts of the world and even this country, um, the, the, there's still a ban on having you know, religious activities localized and all of that. So many may not be able to grow until they are taught that they can have a personal relationship with God, that pastors and teachers, apostles and prophets are mere support systems, not the basis for knowing God. You see, this is very important. Another dimension, for instance, is the dimension of finances and the well-being of people. 
it's been an imbalance for many, many years in the body of Christ on both ways, neglecting it or exaggerating it. It's, it's caused a lot of problems. And you can see that there are families that have been stranded, people, companies have downsized people and, and you know, their husbands and wives altogether who have lost jobs. And most people have not been taught accurately the economic system of the kingdom. The system allocated for the welfare of the saints. The side effect is that so many people now are languishing in want and poverty and this in itself can become a distraction to our spiritual life. So I'm just saying that it is important that as we seek to inspire and bless our generation to be able to teach and also embrace the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is not found with any single man as a ministry, but it can be outsourced as a product of meekness, a product of pursuit, and a product of diligent search. I have made up my mind as a man of God and one who has been a privileged steward of this mystery that I will, like a spiritual archaeologist, search for all of the dimensions that reveal the whole counsel of God and learn it for myself and my welfare and then do my best to communicate the same to the generation I've been sent to. And this is my first proposition that in our attempt to know God as the first key to influencing our generation, we must be open-hearted more than the doctrine of a denomination, more than the thoughts of a well-meaning mentor or father. This is not a proposition for rebellion at all. Please don't misunderstand me. This is only an attempt for us to enlarge our appetite for spiritual things so that we can incorporate within our spiritual space all the dimensions of God required for life and godliness. Amen. The second, very quickly, the second key that I've written here is that for you to be able to impact a generation, you must have a clear vision for your life. This is very important. It's unfortunate that we live in a generation that um, may not be as visionary as we should be. There is such distraction in our generation, especially among uh, the young people, there is, there is a clamor for our space, there is a clamor for our attention. The social media, as important as it is, it's been beneficial and we're taking advantage of it now to be a blessing, but there is a, there is a very demonic and subtle distraction that this generation is falling prey to. And it is important that we find a way of getting back in order. Vision is very important. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, it says, Lo, I come, as it is written of me in the volume of the book, to do thy will. Vision gives you focus. Vision gives you direction. Vision prunes your relationships. Vision prunes your activities. You get busy but not doing many things. Your energy is coordinated. Your energy is directed towards specific kingdom assignments. It is important to find a vision for your life. Your assignment is simply your contribution to kingdom come. Your contribution to the revelation of the Christ and the exaltation of the same the role that you have been divinely given as far as the revelation of the glory of God is concerned and I want to challenge everyone listening it is important to sit back your ambition is not your assignment necessarily it can be incorporated in your assignment but it's important for us to find a vision for our lives a lot of people live meaningless lives and we allow culture and status quo to define the next thing in our lives. Go to school, the next thing marriage, the next thing a job, the next thing children, the next thing, you know, a sense of significance and then people pass on to glory. It's not a very fulfilling life. It is important for us to be able to sit down and on this uh, day, uh, my birthday, I'm using the opportunity to challenge a generation to sit down. I had the privilege to be greatly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro and one of his books, the first of his books that I read many years ago was Discovering Your Purpose. That book radically transformed my life. It just set the coordinates of my focus. And today I live a very busy life, um, but then I am happy that 
my being busy is not shadow boxing it is an intentional um press towards accomplishing specific divine goals and visions it is important we must have clear visions for our lives and those visions must be broken into goals not erratic goals that we just have today and then have tomorrow there are many people who just fabricate goals here and there there must be sustainability to our pursuit you can't just choose to do this today choose to do that tomorrow uh, you will not be able to influence a generation like this one thing i can tell you about this generation is that they respect focus this generation respects sustainability. Uh, you will never be able to accord honor from this generation when you vacillate in your convictions and your focus. Uh, with all humility today, you are celebrating my life and what God has done primarily because there has been consistency and focus. Anyone who knows me, whether it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I've been at the same thing, pursuing to see that the, the life of God, the reality of God is replicated across the earth. This is why I live. This is why I breathe. This is why I sleep. Everything I do is in honor of that vision. And so we must challenge ourselves to find meaning for our lives. When you find your vision, it will direct you, direct marriage, direct your job, direct your location where you settle, direct everything about your life. This is very, very important. We must also, still speaking about vision, um, let me say this. Many people, truly speaking, many people, I would say, are visionary. We've been able to find something to do with our lives but i think the challenge for many people is that we just stop at the realm of visions and we never come up with strategies for actualizing that vision it is not enough to have a vision i want to have a great ministry i want to build a great business i want to be a good um family man i want to be a good career person uh, you know and so on and so forth most people have passed that realm of just documenting something that they think they want to state their lives for but i am challenging everyone listening to me and everyone watching master the science of achievement it is very important the strategy that turns dreams and visions to reality it is important it is wonderful to have a vision but it is noble when the vision speaks. Today, by the grace of God, what we celebrate that we call koinonia, what we celebrate, the ministry that the Lord has committed to my hand, was once a vision in the heart of a young man. But by the grace of God, through the networking of systems and spiritual strategies, today has become a blessing to everyone around the globe. And so I am challenging us. There are businesses, there are dreams that we have, there are ministries that are locked up from within our spirit. And many people continue to write these visions. They go for retreats. I want to build a house. I want to do this and that. But many of us have not mastered the science, the technology for achievement. That is a whole subject I'm trusting by the grace of God that the Lord will grant grace as the weeks and the months progress and when we have the opportunity to make contact with ourselves again so that the ministry of transformation continues, I, I trust that I'll be sharing specific strategies that we will be able to use to achieve dreams. You'll never move forward. You'll never truly be motivated when all you have is vision. As important as that is, you must be able to know how to turn dreams into reality. Praise the Lord. The next point that I have here is that to influence a generation, you must contend for mental transformation. Look, I cannot stress this enough. Listen to me. Please listen to me. Everyone listen very carefully. It is, it is important. The place of mental transformation, sustaining superior belief systems, belief systems that are beyond our cultural context superior belief systems that are are superior to our our backgrounds our failures of the past and so on and so forth now i've done a number of teachings you can 
access them, uh, several teachings that, that relate to this. But let me say this very, very important. Proverbs, um, I mean, um, Ephesians chapter 3, I would say, verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think, ask or think, ask or think. That means God will do what we ask and he will also do what we think. Your thinking is also a prayer warrior. It raises requests to heaven. And we have many people that pray. Africa is a praying continent. Nigeria is a praying generation. Don't get me wrong. I am, I am a man of prayer. You know that. But I am telling you, you will never be able to rise to influence a generation globally, territorially, until you sustain a superior belief system. Most of the time we spend trying to live fake lives, going on social media to do a lot of things, you know, just trying to act out narratives that are untrue. Those times can be invested into building belief systems that are superior. A superior belief system is a belief system that is referenced um, first from scripture and then referenced from a system of mentorship from men who have proven track records. A superior belief system is not an invention of an individual. These are pathways, mental pathways that have been proven to work. Every dimension of result that we seek has a corresponding belief system that attracts it. Success is not what you pursue. If you find yourself pursuing success of any kind, spiritual, financial, is, is, is already proof that you will never get it. Success is attracted by your growth. Success is attracted by the requisite belief system that controls it. Every dimension of grace, even the anointing, we're a generation that is so passionate about the anointing. The anointing does not just come because you are hungry. There is a requisite belief system. The oil did not come provided the vessel was small. As the vessel was expanded, the oil continued to expand to assume the size of the vessel. This is very important. A few script Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Sustain this paradigm, this belief system that was in Christ Jesus. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind as he thinketh in his heart, so he is, or so is he. Very important. It equates your physical results to your belief system. You know, we talk a lot about mindsets. A mindset is not a belief system different from the one you have. You can have another belief system different from the one you have, but it produces the same result of failure. We're talking of a superior belief system outsourced first from scripture from scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation it is important and then to sustain the ability to glean from the mind of extraordinary mentors men and women whose lives through history whose lives through their books have been able to command notable results it is important we must contend for mental transformation very very important listen this is how it is watch this your your I, I, i'm sure that the camera is, is is capturing this your your results listen your results are controlled by your actions your actions are controlled by your decisions your decisions are controlled by the information that has framed your belief system. Your belief system is controlled by the source of the information that has made that belief system. And the source of the information is controlled by the relationships and the associations you have kept. Let me repeat myself again. That your result, any result in ministry in life, is controlled by the actions you have taken. And the actions that you take is controlled by your convictions or your belief systems. Your belief systems are controlled by the information 
the source of information that has framed that belief system. And then ultimately, the relationships, the men and the women you have allowed into your intellectual space, the men and women you have allowed into your mental, your spiritual space. That means if there is a problem with your results, you need to trace it to the actions you are taking. You need to trace it to your belief system. You need to trace it to the source of the information. It matters who mentors you, not just that you are mentored. It matters what books you read, not just that you are a reader. It matters who you listen to, not just that you are a listener. Relationships are important. It's your relationship with God that brought you salvation. It's your relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to provide spiritual guidance. So I think it is a cause for us to really, we want our results changed. But most times, we do not um, check the dynamics properly. We just want to keep focus. People, they focus on action to change the result. So they try something, it doesn't work, they try another action. For as long as action is where you start from, you will live a frustrated life. You must start first from the associations and relationships. Then you now go to the information that comes from those associations. And then the convictions those informations bring. And then the actions that are taken in honor of those convictions. And then inevitably, you will have results that honor those convictions. So this is my third challenge um, to us as a, we must be able to sustain superior beliefs. I continue to challenge myself and I thank God for the privilege and the honor to serve this generation and I thank you for trusting me with your loyalty and your honor. I do not take it lightly and I do not take it for granted. But then I continue to transit myself mentally to rise to the context that is able to bear this global demand and to communicate truth, to communicate righteousness in a way and a manner that can be a blessing to all and sundry, regardless of tribal affiliation, regardless of intellectual stratification, regardless of our political affiliations, regardless of what nation. It is important that we build ourselves intellectually, we build ourselves mentally so that we can be able to communicate the life of God in a way that becomes attractive, in a way that becomes a blessing. My life has proven it again and again that chasing success is a total waste of time. We must trust God for grace. We must trust God for the ability to be able to um, attract success through the transitions that happen in our minds. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, the next point is that you must be extremely valuable. The key word is extremely. Listen, listen, listen. And I'm speaking to my generation. I know that there are people of all kinds of age ranges, but, but really, if you are from 45 years and under, please listen to me very carefully. This message is most important for you. There is a minimum standard of value that you must bring to the table of greatness for this generation to honor you, for this generation to recognize you, and for this generation to open up their hearts to receive of what you represent. And this is true for believers, sadly speaking and respectfully so. Many, many believers have not contended for the level of value that can make a reward system that is global in context. It is important for us to be extremely valuable. Hear what the Bible says in um, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The Bible says the gift of a man, the gift of a man, my God. You know, as I'm saying this, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed by the truthfulness of this scripture. The gift of a man make it room for him and it brings him the gift is a vehicle the man does not go before great men he does not have what it takes to go it is the gift that transports him the value of a man like a lift lifting you from one building to the other you know when when you get into an elevator or a lift it will lift you from ground one to the last floor in a matter of minutes. And the Bible says that your value is akin to that elevator. 
that it can bring you before great people. We live in a generation that is obsessed about connection. I want to know this. I want to meet this person. I know this person. But the, the surest way to be able to connect to relevant people is to be valuable. The proof that you are valuable is that people pursue you. All men seek for you. I've, I've said it humorously that there are things when you have only the poor will look for you. There are things when you have only the rich will look for you. There are things when you have only children will look for you. There are things when you have only adults will look for you. There are things when you have only sick people will look for you. But there are certain dimensions of value when you have, like it was for Jesus. All men, all men will seek for you. They will veto your background. They will look beyond your weaknesses and limitations. They will, they will cross mountains and walk and pass through waters to meet with you. And this is my challenge to this generation. We must contend to be exceptionally valuable. First Kings 7, 13 and 14. This is a scripture that has blessed me and I, I really would want you to take note of this scripture. First Kings 7 from verse 13 to 14. The Bible talks about a man called Hiram. And the Bible says that King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram. And the Bible says that he was, he was a widow's son. The background of this guy was not something that was desirable. He came from a background that was not, was not worthy of, um, it was not something to be proud of. But he rose to become one who served in the king's palace. He was a craftsman. Very powerful scripture. That means that your background is not the excuse. You can, you can walk your way through being exceptionally valuable to a point where you are blessed. And listen, you will only receive the reward of kings when you can serve kings. If you serve mean men, you cannot receive the reward of kings. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 41, Genesis 41, when you read from verse 14, the Bible says how that the king sent and they brought Joseph from his dungeon. They shaved him and he was ready to go before Pharaoh. And then he interpreted the dreams when you read from verse 33. He now advised the king. He said, um, king, search all over Egypt for a man who is discreet and wise. And he began to suggest an economic blueprint that will save the entire Egypt from financial, um, I mean, lack and want in the days that would come. And then when you read from verse 39, from verse 39 down to 46, the king himself said that there was no man paraphrasing. He had sought for a man, and in a moment, ladies and gentlemen, the lifting power of being exceptional, in a moment, within the twinkling of an eye, a man's exceptional value made the king to honor him. When you read from verse 39 to 46, several things happened to him. You know, he had the privilege of marrying um, Potiphera, the daughter of the, you know, the, the priest of On, and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and he, he was lifted because of him. He preserved the nation of, of Israel in Egypt until there arose another Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. So we must be very, very valuable. If you're, if you're writing and you're noting, please take note of this. Every time I teach about value, and I think this is a timely message for this generation, value in my teaching and in my opinion, and this, and this is also consistent with scripture, is divided into two parts. Number one is your virtue. Our generation is, I think we've done fairly well in terms of the intellectual side of value. But the first dimension of value that I'm bringing for you is virtue. Virtue is a, virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. It is not only important to be a good IT person, a good engineer, a good doctor, and so on and so forth. Um, we need men and women of solid character. It is true that we are men, but we must continue to contend to rise to a point where we are people of virtue. That when people look at you, you become the clearest expression of the Christ. This is very, very important. 
the bible encourages us again and again to be able to build character to be men and women to put off the former man you know and his deeds and to put on the new man recreated in christ and i appeal to this generation i beseech you like the apostle will say by the mercies of god that we pay attention to the value and the excellency of character Character is an, is, a, is an aspect that our generation is losing. There are virtues, virtues of dignity, virtues of respect and honor, virtues of faithfulness, and all of these kinds of things. It is important that we trust God for grace to be able to embrace the kind of character that can make us desirable within the context of our generation. And then, of course, our transactable skill. We must be exceptional. Let me tell you something I wrote here, very important. I said your value decides your relevance. It is true. Now, not your relevance as created by God. Your relevance as demanded by this generation. When nobody is seeking you and placing a demand on what you represent, it is proof. It's a report card to you that you may not be valuable enough. The second thing I want to say about that I wrote here is be competent and excellent. Do not just be valuable. Be competent. Be excellent. These are magnets that will attract people. They will attract opportunities. They will attract resources to you. I tell you this truthfully. Pastors, apostles, prophets, do not, do not embrace a life of laziness and mediocrity just because the grace and the anointing of, of the Spirit of God is upon us. I challenge everyone, career people, uh, school children, um, and, 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 and those who are, are students, those who are workers, be exceptional. Make up your mind that you are going to pay the price and deliver at its peak. Get to the zenith of everything that you are capable of doing. And then you will attract reward systems in a way and a manner that will surprise you. I, I see this every day. I watch with shock and wonder how that people who have not contended for a threshold level of value continue to believe that reward systems will fish themselves into their lives. It's not going to happen. There's no superstition about living a rewarded life. It is a direct measure of your value. And your value must be such that it's needed and useful within the context of a civilization. It's not enough to say, I am valuable. Is your value needed? Is your value useful within the context of a generation, within the context of a civilization? This is very, very important. So don't forget the things we are dealing with. That number one, you must know God, right? Very, very important. And that number two, you must be a person of vision, a clear vision for your life. Number three, you must contend for mental transformation. And then number four, you must be extremely valuable, extremely valuable. Work on your skill, work on your ability. Let, let me challenge you, listen. Run away from premature manifestation. Oh, this is a message to my precious generation. Run away from preachers, listen, apostles, prophets, leaders, business people. Pay the price to work on yourself. This generation is not patient with mediocrity. Once you miss your chance, your first opportunity to make the best impression is going to take you a long time for this generation to listen to you again. Men of God, some of the delay you are experiencing in your ministry may not be demonic. It is God's mercy to preserve you so that when you come out from that cave of Adulam, you can communicate a dimension of spiritual reality that will be a blessing. Run away from premature manifestation. I know we're in a social media world where it's very free to just float an Instagram page, a YouTube page, you know, and we want to sell and market everything. But look, let's get back to the fundamentals of success. The Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Competence will always pay. Mastery is the way forward in your profession, even spiritually. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comments.
session where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain be.